I have been taking care of my mom for the past 17 years. Um, she had uh, metastasized breast cancer, so it was in her um, bones. Um, she was terminal. And um, as her health was degrading, um, we started to look at other alternatives because she was taking fentanyl, she was taking hydrocodone, she was taking all of these very um, intense um, medications to manage her pain. And um, it got to the point where um, it was, I'm gonna say unbearable because she was living with pain every day. And um, what was really hard for me was um, watching her suffer. So um, I talked to her about um, uh, using psilocybin as an alternative um, because um, the fentanyl would uh, actually make her have um, vertigo and she would actually fall a lot. And at that time, um, she had um, hip surgery and she had broken her thigh bone. So um, we could not risk her to continue to have falls at home. And so um, I um, offered to do a session, a therapy session with psilocybin. And um, I'm gonna let you know that um, uh, when we were preparing for this session, um, it was, um, you have to understand, my mom has never done anything. She's never done any kind of drugs, she's never drank. Um, she would do wine like every five years or something on a very special occasion, right? Um, she's never done any kind of drugs, um, didn't drink alcohol. So she was like literally a virgin taking this. And I, I thought that the amount that we were going to give her was gonna be enough, but it, it was too much. And so she had a bad trip. Um, I want to say it was a bad, bad trip. It was monitored. We were there to help her. And um, I felt really bad about the, the first session. But um, later on, um, as I continued to talk to her more about it, because, you know, um, she was, <laughs> we would joke about it because of the bad trip. There were some funny um, instances that happened, and we would just joke about it. And so... When she started um, going, I think this was the last week um, before she transitioned, um, I was with her and um, we had some mushroom tea. And I used a lower dose, but this time she was more open and um, it um, really opened her up to talk more and be more receptive. And um, when we had the conversation, she was more calm, she was more at peace. And I feel like she accepted um, what was happening to her as she was transitioning. And uh, I think that it was much easier for her to um, accept death when um, she finally did go, so I did appreciate that. Um, I don't think she was as afraid. I had um, been doing research on um, psilocybin and um, I heard of um, I think her name is, is it Maria Sabina? Um, and, uh, and I realized that um, medicine people, both, both medicine men and medicine women, um, use it a lot to help them in regards to helping whoever that they're trying to cure or to help with their illness and stuff like that. And it, and it expands your consciousness. And um, I felt like um, the more I delved deeper into um, finding out about the history about psilocybin, I really um, understood that it was used as a tool to really expand our consciousness, to be able to um, uh, 
I don't know, give us more insights in um, how to be with nature because we are nature. Um, we're made from the same materials as, um, if you want to say, the stars. You know, we're, we're carbon, um, we're mammals, um, we're part of nature. And uh, mushrooms came from nature. And when I also did um, deeper research in anthropology, um, they also believed that um, back millennia, um, that that was the vehicle that expanded our consciousness to be able to imagine and to create and to see things, you know, beyond. And, and I truly believe that. Um, so uh, not only that, um, I started using psilocybin to help um, with a lot of the things that um, I was trying to process in regards to like life and death. And um, that was really important for me. And the more I used it, the more I noticed the benefits from using it. And it was, it's a, it really is a spiritual experience. Um, for me, I just felt like I was connecting to something much bigger than myself. And it just allowed me to let go, you know? And in that, I really felt like um, it is um, spiritual medicine. When the pandemic hit, I am both black and I am Asian. And I really felt traumatized by all of the violence that was erupting during the pandemic. Seeing black men, um, if not black people, literally being policed with brutality and killed constantly. I just feel like um, it was um, exponentially, um, ex what's the word I'm trying to say, acerbated, where it was just so much. And then um, having Trump as our president at that time to um, have him continuously promote Asian hate, even though he um, loves to talk about his um, continued support of the Chinese <laughs> um, government. I felt like it, he um, perpetuated this narrative that um, caused a lot of Asians to be um, victimized. Um, and being at that intersection between black and Asian, it really caused me to deal with a lot of depression and stress and anxiety and then having to um, process my mother's loss, um, a lot of grief. Uh, I was experiencing a lot of grief and um, I just did not want to take any um, synthetic medications to deal with my depression because in Western medicine, they like to put a Band-Aid on it and um, give you these medications that you're supposed to take after so many months for your body to adjust for this chemical, you know, um, introduction of these, you know, medications. And I just didn't want to go through that because previously when I was younger, I went through some de depression and I, they put me on, um, I think it was Zoloft. And um, it, I did not like the way it made me feel. And so I knew that there were benefits to using psilocybin to help manage with depression. My dad um, was a Vietnam veteran. Um, we lost him in 2007. And uh, I saw him go through PTSD. And I knew, um, especially um, watching videos from Paul Stamets, uh, the, um, Myco, um, mycologist, I knew that um, you can microdose psilocybin to help with um, depression. And so I started microdosing after my mom passed and it has helped me tremendously um, deal with a lot of stress and depression. And um, um, along with therapy, um, I feel like that is what's been getting me through these really hard times. In order for us to be able to overcome all of the trauma that we have inherited, we really need to go down to the root 
and understand where that trauma stems from. And the psilocybin, the mushrooms told me this. They did. They, they told me that the root of all of my trauma came, comes from my ancestors. And in order for me to heal myself, I needed to be able to open myself up to be able to process all that has been handed down to me. And that's why I'm, that's what I mean when it, it expands your consciousness. It allows you to open your mind, you know, to allow you to receive those messages. And that is really where the root of my um, inquiry, my doctoral um, degree is coming from, is re-indigenizing ourselves to identify with our indigenous roots, the cultural roots that we are so much a part of. So if I stood in front of you and I had both of my parents put their hands on my shoulder and then have their parents put their hands on their shoulder and their parents, everything that I am goes generations back. And so when you think of that, it's, I mean, it's hundreds of years of ancestors who are passing that down all the way down to me and I carry that and so in order for me to be able to process and be in this space of healing right that's what the mushrooms did it really let me see all of that there was no way I was going to be able to see that without being in that space and that's what that's what they did that's what they did so for me I feel like they're healers they are So microdosing is a, uh, a literally a microdose, which is I think less than. I'm trying to think of what my um, uh, actual dosage is. I think it's like point zero, like two five or something like that. Um, and what I do is um, I use a coffee grinder, and I put in um, um, I think it's two grams um, of. Uh, mushrooms in there and then I take the capsules and I pack the um, the powdered mushrooms in there and then I put it in with all of my um, supplements that I take every day and so um, I've been doing that since um, yeah since last year I've been um, taking it and it's been just part of my regimen and I've noticed that um, I don't um, have my deep depression anymore I feel uh, more um, like I want to participate in life. Um, I'm um, a little bit, uh, it, I'm myself, let's just say that, because I'm a very, I don't want to say this, but I'm a very sunny person, if you want to say that. I have a very sunny disposition. And so when people meet me, they um, love my energy because I'm very optimistic all the time. But um, when I'm not like that, people notice the difference right away. And um, even though I had lost my mother, people understood that, well, she's processing, she's going through a really, you know, um, but I would not have been able to process that loss as effectively as I thought I would without having the psilocybin in, um, in my, I guess, in my regimen or just in my life, period, you know what I mean? Um, so it's helped me a lot. It's helped me to, um, yeah, to have hope. It gives me hope, it really does. So I'm very happy f about th that. But not only that, it um, makes me, um, it makes me just want to be able to help people. And um, when people ask about the psilocybin that I take, you know, I try to educate them and just bring more awareness because there's a lot of fear around psilocybin. They just think like, oh, psychedelic. They have these very, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Um, uh, st I don't want to say stereotypes, but preconceived notions of what psilocybin is. And a lot of it is negative or wrong. Um, unless you actually interact with the mushrooms and understand what it's trying to say to you, because they do, they give you messages, you know. Um, it's your subconscious that's really trying to talk to you, to bring awareness to all of the things that you're going through, because we're so taught in society to 
suppress or repress like emotions and not process things but like the mushrooms they allow you to really open yourself up to be vulnerable to allow those messages to come through because i really feel like um if you want to call it the universe or energy um that is trying to really communicate to you all the things that you hold inside yourself and but don't allow yourself to um you know uh, receive because we get bombarded every day of how we should be you know that we don't really pay attention or listen to what our body is trying to say or what our spirit is trying to say our emotions are trying to show us you know all of that gets really blocked what microdosing does excuse me one it um elevates um your thinking because sometimes like when when i'm like just in the shower sometimes i like i have to run through the list of all the things i got to do and then i have these like moments of like bursts of in, uh, imagination or creativity i'm like oh man i wouldn't even thought of that that you know i, I would have these moments of just things would just be shown to me and I, I would have these, uh, what's the word I'm trying to, just moments of inspiration, you know? And then, and not only that, um, it just, like again, it gives me hope. It does, it, it makes me look at life in just a positive way. It, it like takes away like the dreary, heavy, like sense that we get sometimes when we get so, <laughs> bombarded with all the things that we have to do because you have to remember in in this society we're always taught to go 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 like what do I have to do today <laughs> like it's so sometimes it's so overwhelming that it gets a little depressing you know and when you think about that it's just like we're always in production mode like I just see myself as a producer but with the the psilocybin with the microdosing it makes me think more of, oh, I'm going to go um, for a walk. It, it gives me the um, inspiration to like, you know, participate in life more like, you know, being outside, getting fresh air, <laughs> having these moments of creativity where I want to like paint or play the drums or, you know, things like that. And it's just like, and I really feel like it lifts my mood up. It lifts me up where I just feel happy with the microdosing. What it does is that it helps your neurons. It creates more of them. And so when um, what you're doing is that you're um, engaging your brain more, I, I guess you can say that, but it's, it's like firing off your synapses is what I feel like it's doing. And it's making me want to create more, you know? Oh, that's what I'm wanting to say, mycelial. So, because mushrooms are mycelial, right? They're, they um, create these little um, branches. If you ever see mycelium, they create these like root-like branches. And I kind of feel like that's what's happening. Like it's, it's making my brain more active, more creative. I guess that's how, the best way I can describe it. It makes me want to participate in life and not get stuck in the doldrums. So when I let people know that I microdose, um, some people do ask me questions, you know, so that I can educate and bring more awareness to um, its use. Um, but other people <laughs> are just very uh, standoffish. And so uh, I know I'll notice that and, and I, you know, right away I was like, um, I'm sorry if I offend you in, in any way, um, but um, if you want to know more information, you know, just ask me, but I always try to be more open about it. And if, they, if they're not um, receptive to, to it, you know, I just, I just respect them. You know, um, I did have somebody who was um, very Christian and um, they, which was a really weird response. But when I let them know that I do um, use psilocybin mushroom to help me with my depression, anxiety, and stress. And they're like, oh, well, you know, 
downcast eyes, head looking down to the ground. It was almost like shame, you know? And I was like, no, you don't have to be ashamed about, you know, I was like, it's been around for millions of years. It's mother nature and, you know, um, it's medicine before. So <laughs> one thing that I have to let remind people that when Hippocrates, who is what a lot of people um, say is the father of medicine, right? He brought his toolbox with him and they were all herbs. They were all herbs and some of it was mushrooms in his toolbox that he would travel with, you know, all over the country to heal people when you're a healer. Like all medicine came from nature. All of the stuff that we use were all nature-based. None of it was synthetic back in, 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 the, in the day. And mushrooms was a part of a lot of um, healers' toolboxes. And so even when um, they are hesitant, when they think about that, I was just like, yeah, so it's nature's medicine. You don't need to be afraid of it, you know, just be aware of it and respect it. One of the things that I have been taught when, um, when I first initially started using psilocybin with the mushrooms, there is ritual that is being called in because every time you use it in the way that nature-based um, peoples used it is by um, setting an intention, by um, giving um, grace and being grateful and receiving what this medicine is about to show you you know because when it's mind expanding you know or expanding your consciousness like that um there there is this relationship that you have to establish with this medicine and there is a whole ceremony um and i really feel that the only way we can be able to really respect how to use this spiritual medicine is really calling in indigenous voices. They have to be present at the table, you know? And I just feel like that there's so much disregard for um, these cultural um, ways of being, you know? Um, that's why I really feel like um, nature is letting us know that there is a pathway to healing if we just allow ourselves to, to be open to it, but respectful. You know, and I kind of feel like if we're not, it'll it's going to end up being very bad. And I don't want it to be the way that cannabis has gone, because I really do truly believe that we have enslaved that plant because that's what we're used to. You know, in capitalism, it, it's not about equity. It's always about profit. And so I really don't want um, the mushrooms to be used that way. It needs to be used for healing, you know, profit or not, you know what I mean? It, it's, it's for healing, so. I'm currently in a doctoral program. My dissertation is about learning from the land and using our stories to um, get in touch with our cultural roots. And that involves ceremonies and rituals but it also centers on healing and mushrooms I feel um, are the gateway that allows us to be able to see ourselves um, more than this you know what I mean we're all everything's interconnected we're actually walking ecosystems we're part of an ecosystem but we don't treat ourselves as part of an ecosystem because we're so focused on individualism, right? Just being by yourself. Humans are never meant, humans were never meant to be individualized. You know, individualism is a lie. It's a lie. Humans um, are social mammals. We need each other. And the only way we can do that is, is connecting. And mushrooms teach us that. Because when you grow mushrooms, they lay the foundation to build the system to connect all life, all life. 
And so for me, I feel like if we go back to that way of being in nature where we connect, we belong. And that's what mushrooms teach you. They teach you to belong. We um, live on this planet, but we are so homeless. We don't belong to the planet. We believe that the planet is just there for us to extract all these resources and make profit off of it. And that's why we feel so disassociated. Mushrooms teach us how to be able to reconnect and belong to each other, belong to the planet, you know, belong to something much bigger than ourselves because we're made from the same things. It goes, it always goes right back. Everything's cyclical. It goes right back to letting you know you are, are a child of the stars. You belong in the universe because you are the universe. We are nature and mushrooms teach us that. And that is where the healing comes from. So it doesn't matter. I, one of the things that I really wanted to emphasize about indige, indigeneity, your indigenous identity, right? Everybody is indigenous to their own culture, right? So for me being black and Asian, I have cultural roots in being African, and being Asian. And by delving back into that culture, my cultural roots, I find my healing. And that is how I act just like a mushroom. Because it makes me feel like I belong to my home. Everything that defines who I am, you know? But it also expands my circle to be able to be a child of this planet, you know? I belong to the earth, you know? And I think that when, um, when you think of it in that way, we can be able to belong to each other without all of this divisiveness, without all of this individualism. We can be able to belong to each other as humanity. And we don't have to end up continuing to fight and all the violence. Like, we know how to heal ourselves. Again, this is the message from the mushrooms. We can heal ourselves if we just get over ourselves. Because the more we try to find ways to be separate, right? The more trauma, depression, all of the things that make us feel so isolated and alone. It's just like the mushrooms teach us to belong. <laughs>